All right, so what's making the rounds right now? Apparently, it's a person who loved the Wii U. I know, of all things, just loving a Nintendo console apparently has gotten everybody bent out of shape. But the reason for this is apparently that the person is over-glorifying the Wii U era, and a lot of people are trying to push back on that. So what I've been seeing on my timeline is a whole bunch of people basically saying, like, oh, we're rewriting history now and all this other stuff. Uh, so I want to look at the original post, see what that person said exactly, and just weigh in with my own two cents. I just want to make it clear, though, that uh, whenever I do a, a topic like this, I generally kind of err on the side of just let people have their own opinions. Like, it, it's always so weird to me how people get so authoritarian and bent out of shape if someone likes something or doesn't like something. I think that we can all like what we like and dislike what we dislike and just be respectful to one another whenever that isn't the case. All right, well, anyways, I have talked long enough. Let's see what this post is all about. So it's actually like a response to a meme about how great the Wii U was, but this person in particular got a lot of wrath. So. It just says here, this thread really shows who owned a Wii U and who didn't. The Wii U was a golden era for Nintendo fans, which I don't know if I would say it was a golden era. That might be a little bit of a stretch. Like again, didn't hate the Wii U, but I would say it's one of the weakest console generations for Nintendo probably but again that isn't to say that there isn't things to like about the wii u he goes on to say it felt like every six months you had a first party exclusive it was very good i actually feel like this is more true about the, the nintendo switch more than anything i feel like the nintendo switch's generation has just been non-stop bangers every single year like yeah some years are better than others and yeah maybe i could say that certain entries in certain series had better entries in previous generations but just the fact that nintendo's been feeding us content like every three to six months has been phenomenal and i do appreciate the effort there mario kart 8 which uh, you know what like i'm gonna keep my opinions low on this one but i did i didn't like mario kart 8 i get that it's content rich but i don't like the theming of it i don't like the music and stuff like that the graphics are amazing though donkey kong tropical freeze yeah that's that is a very good one right there bayonetta 2 i i never played the bayonetta games i i don't like hack and slash uh splatoon 1 um I think Splatoon's okay. I, I do think that there's a lot more you could do with that franchise, but I get that the primary focus tends to be the online play, which I never really got into. So it, I guess it's technically just not for me because I would like an even better single player campaign. I think that it's okay, it's serviceable, but it could be a lot better. The HD Zeldas, yes, 100%. Like that is the reason to boot up your, your Wii U these days is that you can play Twilight Princess HD, which is phenomenal. I, I would say that that is easily the best way to play Twilight princess a game that was already great to begin with and then you know wind waker hd it's got a lot of quality of life improvements that it's really hard to ignore i don't love that they just drastically changed the visual aesthetic of it i think that was a very weird choice if nothing else they should have had a choice between cell shaded and that bloom effect but i guess like if i had to choose between one or the other those quality of life improvements make it way too good to uh pick the gamecube version over it pikmin 3 Heck yeah, all right, you see, it's, I'm starting to see the sense that you're making here. Pikmin 3 was amazing. Uh, it's not my favorite one in the franchise, but I, it's, every single Pikmin game has been great. So like, even if there is a best and the worst, it's still, more Pikmin is just a blessing. And we, we need a Pikmin 5 very soon. Xenoblade Chronicles X, I think is what it's called. And I never played that one. 3D World. Now we're starting to get into territory that I'm, I'm not on board with. 3D World to me was a major setback from the Galaxy games. I felt like the Galaxy games was pure top shelf quality and I guess a lot of people kind of battle it out about whether or not it was thematically great as a Mario game or if uh, the gameplay itself, its core gameplay was that great, but I, I never had a complaint about it. I know that people like with Mario Odyssey claim like, oh, it's open world now, which is so much better, but I never really noticed that it's sort of linear with Mario Galaxy 1 and 2. I just thought that they were just great, well put together games that looked fantastic and had amazing music. We don't talk about that enough. But, <laughs> sorry, I got I went off on Mario Galaxy. Uh, 3D World, though, was just one that I, I don't think that it was that special. It, they kind of took like the 2D Mario sort of rules and stuff like that, and I, I didn't think it was like that great. Mario Maker was a fantastic idea. Thank you for introducing us to uh, Mario Maker Wii U, but I mean, we got, you know, Mario Maker 2 on the Switch. So, uh, I, you know, it's like, 
it, I don't need to go back to the first one anymore. Yoshi's Woolly World, that's also one I haven't played. Captain Toad, that was a pretty good one. The Wonderful 101 is again a hack and slash genre game. So, you know, I would pass on that. But to add, I would also say that Star Fox Zero was a personal favorite of mine. I know that a lot of people disliked that game, but I thought that that was a great addition. So it's funny because like outside of a Metroid game, the Wii U did have like a lot of games from franchises that I wanted to see, like Pikmin and Star Fox. And I think that that's almost like a reason why a lot of people disliked the, uh, the Wii U. It was just like all those um, lesser franchises finally got a little bit of a moment to shine. And stuff like Zelda, I, I mean like Breath of the Wild eventually came out, but outside of that there wasn't really a, you know, a console exclusive Zelda game that came out that generation, which is kind of wild when you think about it. Not gonna do the pun, not gonna go and get that pun. It was hanging, it was low hanging fruit, and I chose not to get it. You should be proud of me. Okay, let's see what else he says. The home screen filled with Miiverse posts and Mies, yes, 100%. Yes, like the one thing that the Switch lacks is the Miiverse. Miiverse was fantastic. Uh, I think the only way they could have made it better for the Switch generation was to have better integration with something like Twitter and stuff like that. But instead they decided to just scrap it completely and just have integration with Twitter and Facebook and stuff. And I thought that was kind of a bad move. I, I loved all the creativity and the artwork and the just the communities that would build for each individual game just because it exists within the Wii U itself. That's sorely missed. Anyways, he goes on to say, it felt alive, much more soul than the white and gray screen of the game titles on uh, the Nintendo Switch. He actually said tiles there. Yeah, the Switch is selling well, but I'm gonna talk about the elephant in the room and it's that the Switch is a portable system. People break them and they buy more than one Switch in their lifetime. Ooh, someone's got butterfingers, it sounds like. Yeah, it's possible to break a Switch. It's probably the most delicate Nintendo console they've ever made. It's true. I mean, I, I've had to buy so many Joy-Con just because I dropped the system, and then the little piece of plastic that keeps it like locked into the, the chassis breaks. It's so brittle. Uh, so, like, you know, small amount of... No, I'm not going to give it to him. He's saying that I had to buy a whole nother Switch system. I didn't have to. I just wanted the OLED. So anyways, he kind of goes on a little further here. So let me just uh, scroll down really fast. He says, I'm going to expand on this. Free online, which is nice. Uh, no DLC, just free updates. I don't think that's true. Uh, there had to have been DLC for some of the Nintendo games, right? I'd rather have a Nintendo console that has a really good Smash Brothers, Splatoon, Mario, Zelda, Pikmin, Mario Kart, Xenoblade, Mario Maker, Yoshi, Donkey Kong Country, and stuff like Captain Toad, than a big third party. I think what he's trying to say, he's coping with the fact that like there wasn't really third party support on the, on the Wii U, and there's tons and tons of support on the Nintendo Switch. But we're trying to pretend like there isn't a ton of great games on the Nintendo Switch. I mean, there's like Luigi's Mansion 3 is like the best one in the series, in my opinion. There's also, you know, Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom. Say what you will about those ones, but they're mega popular and they certainly have left their cultural impact. So like, I gotta give big kudos for that. And also Mario RPG Remake, oh my God. <laughs> Pikmin 4, I mean, you talked about Pikmin 3, but I mean, Pikmin 4 is pretty high up there too, right? I, I guess like the only thing that is missing from the Switch generation is Star Fox for me. And for some other folks, I guess F-Zero, but at least there was that F-Zero 99 game that came out, right? And then there's also just all sorts of great Fire Emblem games. And for me, my little wish list game somehow became a reality this generation. We got Fire Emblem 1, the NES title, actually localized and put on a Nintendo Switch. That was, that was incredible. I, I wish they would do stuff like that more often. Like, I want to see some more Nintendo uh, Jap Japanese exclusive games brought over to the West. That, that would be so freaking cool. Um, Mother 3, yeah, Nintendo, are you listening? Because that would be great. All right, but anyways, yeah. I, I don't know if I agree with this entirely. I think that maybe he's being... Uh, it, his opinion is his opinion, but there's there's bits and pieces of this that kind of scream hyperbolic to me. Like, I feel like he wants to prove a point that the Wii U was actually a good console, actually. And 
if he had just kind of stuck with that maybe it wouldn't have gotten as much attention i mean i could get behind that there are some really cool inventive titles that you just don't see on the switch that got its start on the wii u and yeah i mean the free online is cool and there was a good time to be had on that console it's just that you just look at the back catalog of all the different consoles that have come out over time and i mean i don't know i I still think like GameCube, Wii, and Super Nintendo like are really, really good. And actually, the GameCube kind of is a bit of a weak link, but at least it got inventive that generation. And it's kind of sad. I feel like the GameCube should have had all the just the crowd pleasers, and then like the Wii and then onward should have done the more inventive titles like Super Mario Sunshine or uh, even Luigi's Mansion. If I'm honest with you, I feel like there would have been a better home for it at that point. Now that the the graphical fidelity starts to kind of slow down uh, with the future console generations. But anyways, I I am going way off topic here. Point is, is that Wii U is fine. I think that it was cool. I think that some of the complaints that people had about it. I didn't agree with like some of the stuff that wasn't mentioned there was some people really hated how the controller looked like a Fisher Price toy but to me no I, I thought that it was it was you know it had a good form factor to it and uh, some of the stuff that you got to do on that console was awesome the fact that it could be a TV remote was a huge life lifesaver for me back in the day uh, I wish that the switch could still do that sadly it doesn't but yeah so yeah, I'm a little bit torn on this one. Again, he's a, he's welcome to have his opinion. You're not going to get any bashing from me. But as far as just civil disagreements go, I, I think that the Wii U was good. It was fine. It was it was pretty cool. But it just uh, it didn't have some of the mega heavy hitters that I felt like it needed. It's it's Mario game was not the best in my opinion. Uh, Breath of the Wild came out way too late to the point where it ended up being a you know a a console i'm sorry a launch day console uh title for the switch and there was no metroid you know so the eShop was amazing i loved that i love all the different games that came out on it and again the miiverse is like the thing that sadly younger kids are just never going to experience and that breaks my heart but yeah i think that's all i have to say about the the wii u today i wasn't expecting to have to talk about that but this was pretty fun. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Appreciate it.